forgot what camera I was on. Brush care, very important. I'm going to take my hat off because it's getting quite warm in here and it's raining. Cats and dogs outside, but I got all the lights are on in here and it gets quite warm. Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. So, the, the question I'm asked a lot of is, and don't forget what's the best way to clean brush care? Well, Visit soap and water by is, by is, is the average type of cleaning thing that we do. But if we don't maintain the brush correctly, what can happen is either the end will fall off, which has happened no end of times in the studio with myself, or quite easily, they can go hard because acrylic is thin with water and then that polymer gets pulled into the back of the brush. So where the, where the brush bristles meet the ferrule, that's where the paint tends to gather. And if you don't wash it correctly, it'll go hard or thicken over time. And all of a sudden you find your brush is gone really heavy on the front end. It does. So um, check your brushes and you'll find that the, the first part of the brush, or should I say, this part of the brush there, that part of the brush there you'll find is very thick and you can't move it because all the acrylic paint dries in there. Now if you don't wash your brushes correctly, that is just going to build and build and build and build until all you've got is a little couple of tiny little hairs on the brush and more often than not what you tend to do with that is chuck it in the bin. Now whether it's a cheap brush or an expensive brush, that is an expensive way to paint because you don't need to do that. You need to maintain your brushes correctly. Let me show you on the table of explanation again how I actually maintain my brushes. This is a good one. As you can see, that um, I'm, I've always got kitchen paper or kitchen roll uh, in the studio, and that's a, that's a good, real good tool. And you might be thinking, Clive, I've seen something like this before. Well, you may have, because this is a remake of an old video that I did a couple of years ago, and I wasn't happy with the quality. And um, I thought, let's, let's give it another whirl. Let's, 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 let's do it again and get it out the way. Now, I've got some warm water, and it's always best to have warm water in a pot, if you can. If not, cold water will do. And you also need another pot with some clear water in it. And the reason I do that is because when I wash my brush, I want to make sure that the um, when I when I wash it there with soap and I clean it out in there, I want to sure make sure there's no residue coming out of that brush. That means to me that that brush is clean. So what I tend to do is I get some soap, and um, I get asked a lot, what soap do I use? Well, this is just basic baby soap. It's a very very um, soft. Um, lovely soap. You can use brush soap. You can buy brush soap in, um, in in the art stores. But personally, I've never found a reason to buy it. It's just overpriced. And any soap will do. This has got a little bit of moisturiser in it. But as long as you wash the bristles, the the brushes, and rinse them out really well, that doesn't really matter at all. So let's just separate these pots so you can see what I'm doing on all the cameras. Um, so when we've gone into our, our into our paint, in fact, let me just get a see if I've got paint on my palette, which I haven't got. I'm just going to get a little bit of paint. There you go. Just just to dirty the brush, just to show you what I mean. So pretend now we've gone into our brush, into our into our paint. Now we've we've done a bit of painting. We've we've done some lovely little patterns on our canvas. Now our brush is all nice and dirty. It's okay. Now what I suggest you do. The reason one of the reasons I say don't mix if you can help it. With your brush because the more time you do that the more you do that the more paint is going to go up in that part of the brush you want to try to avoid that but we can't always avoid it so i tend to try just try and use the tips where i can and then i rinse my brushes out but we're only human beings at the end of the day and inevitably that paint is going to go there because it is it is taken there with the water yes so what we're going to do first of all before we do anything else we're going to run that into some clear warm water if you've got some warm water that's that's great if not cold water will be will be fine but if you've got cold water make sure you give it a really good rinse and that's what a lot of people do, don't do they tend to dip it your brush in water like this all the time and all you're doing is just clogging that brush up you you, you can see that i don't use a lot of water um, in my paint 
uh, in the studio. Um, if you watch my videos regular, you'll see what I mean. So you, I, I took a little bit of moisture off that brush then, and I'm just going to go into the soap, and I'm going to lather the so soap up. There we go. Now there's a little bit of pigmentation on the soap, so I know that brush is not 100% clean, because I've just come out of there, and that's warm water in there. So I get a little bit of soap on my brush, and I go back into the dirty water, back into the warm water, and I give it a little bit of a stir like that. There's no need to put anything on the base of the, the container, unless you want to, because you're going to damage these bristles if you do. And then I go straight into clean water, and as it, hopefully you can see, there's no pigmentation in that whatsoever. So we've cleaned our brush really well. Now I know there's no paint in there. So as long as you follow that principle, you're always gonna have nice clean brushes. Now, what happens if this part of the brush gets clogged up with paint? What I should say at this point is though, after you've washed your brush, the reason I put that there, which I completely forgotten about, the reason I put that there is after you've washed your brush, you always lay it down flat like that. You should never stand a brush up like that because the water is going to go from there into there. It's going to, it's going to basically break down the glue and, and, and the end of your brush is going to fall off or your bristles will fall out. So until your brushes are dry, you will see during my painting in, in the studio that I will always put my brushes down like that. And then if I don't reuse them the day after uh, and they dry, that one's lovely and dry. I will then stand that up in my paint rack. I've covered this a couple of times before, but I have had loads of questions about this particular subject. So I thought I would do a comprehensive video and try and uh, help you out here. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to actually break down the paint. One of them is soap and water, as we said. Now, the other thing is, there is stuff on the market. This happens to be a Mr. Muscle. Oh, yes. Or a Windex. Now, I don't normally promote products on my site, but I'm going to talk about this. Now, you've got to make sure that this is not the one with vinegar in it. It can't have vinegar in it. Vinegar is going to attack the metal on your brushes and it's going to break them down because vinegar is acid. So you want to avoid that. You've got to make sure that this stuff, um, this Windex or Win Mr. Muscle has not got vinegar in it. I must stress that. But you can also th put water with this, thin it. You can use it to thin your acrylic paints. It's not going to hurt it too much. It's not going to hurt them too much. A lot of people that use airbrushes thin their acrylic paints down with a mixture of this and water. Ratios are on another video. But I just wanted to explain that. But it mustn't have vinegar in it. Again, if you're using it for an airbrush, it's going to break down the, um, the, the enamel, not the enamel, but the, the, the silver on the brush, the chrome, basically. It's, it'll eat the chrome away. Well, so I put a little bit of that, a little bit of Windex, or a little bit of Mr. Muscle, there we are, without the vinegar in it. it smells quite nice too. Um, in a pot, and I'll put a little bit of water with that. 50 50 and then if I got a brush that's gone hard I'll put a brush in and uh, not very good for um, natural bristle brushes we will we'll go down that road again in a minute but you can put your brush in like that give it a bit of a stir just leave that soak there for 20 minutes or so and what you'll find when that comes out is that it'll have softened up so you need to get yourself a little palette knife and then very very gently oh very very gently just break that down like that don't go don't go pushing it too hard and eventually you get all that little muck there's actually a bit of muck coming out of that one and this is not gone hard look see all that muck will come out and then again you go through the cleaning process of what we just said on you and then that brush should be fine if you want to set your brushes for any reason just get a little bit of soap on your fingers and shape your brush and leave that dry and that brush will hold its shape 
but don't forget if you do that <laughs> you need to wash your brush before you use it now i always suggest you give your brushes a rinse in water before you use them anyway because they will adopt the moisture and if if you use a dry brush in acrylic what the first thing that the, the brush is going to do is take the moisture of the acrylic and, and you'll find your paint is going to start drying a little bit quicker than it should on the brush but if you always moisten your brush first then you'll find that not only are you washing up the soap that you've you've done that with you'll find that you the brush will be a lot smoother and it'll work a lot better with the acrylic so once you get in the habit of reshaping your brushes with soap and you always go through the same process when you start your painting is washing your brushes first then using them then you'll never have a problem so let's put that in there now here we are this this brush is it's quite hard there you are it's quite hard it's gone i, I purposely left paint in that one yes i did i did i did i did left purposely left paint in that one so you can soak that in 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 this mixture with the windex so let's get rid of that for the moment the other option you've got is nail varnish remover. That's what you use for taking nail varnish off your fingers. It's an acetone based remover. So you can use that. There you go. Now, I do not recommend you do this if you've got any respiratory problems at all. I do not recommend you mix anything like acetone with water because the films that come off it are quite strong and they can make you a bit woozy. So please, please do not do that. I'm just showing you a couple of different ideas. Now, what I would do is put my brush straight into the acetone and I'd give it a little bit of a mix and mix and match like that and give it a bit of a soak. There you go. And it's starting to soften up already and that acetone will actually break down the plastic bonds of the paint and get that moving within the bristle be very careful you do not go above that mark there on the brush with the acetone because it's going to break down the glue and, uh, and the last thing i want is people messaging me saying well i followed your advice clive uh, but all the ends of my brushes fell off <laughs> so don't do that just soften the bristles with it and you could leave it stand there for 10 minutes 20 minutes or something like that this one's already softened and again get a palette knife very very gently work it through if it's too hard then soak it again and then just keep breaking that down go through there like that this could be a lengthy process and it might need a couple of attempts to get it right and but what you'll find eventually is a couple of loose hairs. Again, go straight into some water, straight into some soap, straight into the rinse. And you'll find, just after that short little demonstration, that that brush is now nice and soft. And it will remain that way now. But you might find also that you'll have a couple of bristles come out because you've gone in there with the power knife, basically. So, you know, it's got its pluses, it's got its minuses. I'm just going to get some more kitchen paper. There you go. Now, following this, actually following the same principle, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the lid on that container of acetone and dispose of that in uh, uh, as best way as I possibly can and um, it, uh, it, it acetone does evaporate do not get that on any painting surface at all try not to splash it on any of your paintings because it's going to rip off your acrylic paint this is called rubbing alcohol and it's 70% isopropene alcohol and 30% distilled water now there's a paint manufacturer out there that says they've got an unlocking formula and that's all this is it's alcohol based so all it is is alcohol and water mixed together distilled water mixed together sprayed on the surface of the paint the paint is manufactured in such a way that the the molecules will soften up or, or, or move apart so you can carry on blending so an unlocking formula it's all it is it's isopropyl alcohol and distilled water so you can use this to strip paint off a board so if, if i my little bunny rabbit on there if I didn't like him, I could spray it on there, let it soak, and I could rub it and rub it, rub, and all of a sudden the acrylic paint will break down and come off. So if it does that, it will clean your brush. Again, put some in 
to the container. You can ha add a little bit of water to this particular one. Um, but this one is distilled water, so you can add some distilled water to this. And um, do not drink it. It is not that type of alcohol. Okay, so I got I got to advise you on that. Please do not drink it. It's not alcohol, not like that. And um, you can soak your brushes in that again, and in exactly the same way as we did with the acetone, washing them out in soap and water, and you're away. So yes, if you want to unlock your certain paints that this particular manufacturer makes, don't go buy any unlocking formula. Use this. Thin it down a little bit with water. Try different variations of water to this. And then you might find you'll save yourself a heck of a lot of money. And I'm here to save you money. So that's all I've got to say about brushes today. I hope that's been of use. It's been a bit long-winded. I do tend to, where did I put my bin? Hey, I do tend to waffle and I do apologize, but I'd like to try and teach where I can. So all it means me to say thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. There will be another one on paints, so please pop along to that. That'll be posted hopefully in a week or two's time but time is relative on youtube as you know um, please press the i cards in the top right hand corner and i'll drop down with all relevant information and some paintings please check them out because there's some there's some playlists in there you might find useful very very much so yes so have a good day a good week a good month a good year because i don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this because as i said time is relative on youtube give me a thumbs up and i'll see you next time don't forget to subscribe bye nice Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk